Welcome to Mysteries and Mimosas. My name is Max Sterling. I'm excited to be here on our full episode Wednesday. Me too, Max. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this episode. So first, I want to remind everybody that you can visit us on Instagram at Mysteries and Mimosas Podcast. You can also find us on our website at mysteriesandmimosas.net. We're also on Facebook. We would appreciate it if you give us a like and a follow. Before we get started on this week's episode, I have trivia for you. I'm taking back control over trivia. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't know. I suck at coming up with the trivia and also being the recipient of no, the I trivia think questions. I think you're really good at uh, coming up with the trivia. <laughs> I just dominated it. No, so, no. I'm just, I come up with way too easy questions. I don't think so. No, I got well, a lot of Well, of course reviews. you wouldn't think so. Well, no, because I got them right. So. Right. All right. You ready for mine? I'm ready. I, I worked extremely hard to find these trivia questions. It's so hard, you don't even know. Oh, great. Okay. All I'm right. ready. Difficult trivia question number one. In 1981, that's the year of this uh, um, episode, by the way. In 1981, MTV launched the first ever music video. What was the name of the video? Thriller. Oh, man. (laughs) Come on. Video killed the radio star? I thought everybody knew that. That was an easy layup. No, I wasn't even around for several years after that, so you can't hold that against me. Okay, fine. Well, need I remind you that when you did trivia on me, you did it in the summer of 1974. I wasn't born until 79, and I still killed it, so Mm. whatever. That's an excuse. Failure, failure, disappointment. All right, here's one for you. In 1981, the video game Donkey Kong was introduced. In the game... What character was introduced to the world? Mario. It is Mario. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I do remember that, actually. That's a fun game. Yeah, 50% here. One for one. Mm -hmm. Or one for two. In 1981, which famous cartoon series made its debut on television? Hmm. If you need a hint, let me know. Like, I don't get options. I'll give you Um, a hint. He-Man or something. Oh, no, dude. I don't know. Okay, hold on then. Give me a hint. Um, it has to do with very magical characters. The, um, Care Bears. No. Oh, those are magical. Yeah. But no, it's the Smurfs. Oh, I like the Smurfs too. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. All right. Last question. In 1981, which unknown rocker opens for the Rolling Stones in Los Angeles? John Bon Jovi. No. I'll give (laughs) you a hint on this one. It's my guilty pleasure. Prince. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Prince, for sure, without a doubt. Okay, so, I don't know. I think you failed. I'm disappointed. I really had high hopes because, like, 80s are your jam. Okay, what? No. Why would you have high hopes about... I would not know what the first music video on MTV was. When I was doing my very difficult, in-depth research of the year 1981, I was like, oh, this is easy. Aria will get all these right. It was written for you, and you let me down. You let everybody down. That's Clear- okay, though. Hmm. Next Clearly, week, that wasn't written for me, or, or I would have gotten I, all no, of No, you're right. In. Clearly, it's not I thought it was. Mm. But next week, you can redeem yourself. I'll give you some good ones next week, okay? Mm. Okay. All right. What do you have for us? Do you have a mimosa recipe for us? I do. And I know you did a really hard research into this mimosa. I did. I just can't wait to hear what it is. It's the exotic mimosa. Sounds exotic. It is. Okay. It has orange juice, pineapple juice, lime juice, vodka, passion fruit liqueur, strawberry syrup, and then you top it with Prosecco. It's delicious. I love it. Yeah. Do you like it? It's amazing. Oh, well, it's a little uh, little tardy in my opinion. Maybe you mixed it wrong, but I like it. Okay, moving on. So thank you for the mimosa recipe, by the way. Today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Carolyn Sue Martin and her two-year-old son, Mark Martin. In August of 1981, Carolyn and her son Mark left their home in Michigan and headed to San Antonio, Texas to start a new life. But after stopping by her mom's house to say goodbye, Carolyn and Mark were never seen or heard from again. That is, at least, by Carolyn's family. 
You see, there's a lot more to Carolyn and Mark's disappearance than her family knows. Prior to Carolyn's plan to relocate to Texas was a very interesting history with Mark's dad. And his dad's name is Harry Carizian. Hmm, okay. Harry and Carolyn were separated in June of 1981, so that same year. Carolyn filed a paternity suit against Harry because at that time they weren't together. At which point Harry was ordered to pay a mere $30 a week in child support. Can you look it up? How much is $30 a week equal now? Ooh. Do your research. research. Raise your hand when you're ready. Okay. Just I'll kidding. let you know. I'll wait. <laughs> that is $106.63 in 2024. So still, it's like, I mean, $400 a month. A little more. A little more. $430 a month about. In, in today's yeah. currency. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Roughly $400 in today's currency, $30 a week. Um, So Harry and Carolyn were separated, and he was ordered to pay that in child support after uh, her paternity suit. This could be part of the reason why Harry and Carolyn reconciled their relationship, because Harry became more involved in Mark's life at this point. That's convenient, though, really, because he's ordered to pay child support, and now all of a sudden he wants to be involved when he didn't before and she actually had to file a paternity suit against him so i don't know maybe he just didn't want to pay child support so yeah that could be i don't know being more involved um yeah i'm gonna leave that one alone i'm not really sure if that's the reason but you know could be Mm -hmm. it very well could be yeah so carolyn's initial plan was to travel to texas with mark and harry in a caravan type style um you know, uh, road trip with Carolyn's brother, Ty, who had his own plans to re- relocate to Oklahoma to search for work. Okay. So they're going to leave Michigan together, her brother, and then her own little family, her and Harry and Mark, mm-hmm. and then they're going to follow or caravan, I guess, until they get to Oklahoma in Oklahoma, Ty is going to stop and set up residence there, and then they're going to continue on to Texas. Correct, yeah, because okay. apparently Harry w- had a new job that he was starting in Texas. And uh, so okay. that was the whole reason why they were supposedly, you know, making this plan to relocate to San Antonio. Oh, okay. But that all changed suddenly when Carolyn, Harry, and Mark stopped by Carolyn's mom's house in Hazel Park, Michigan, to say goodbye. So not only did their plans change to leave sooner, but they decided to change their entire route. Like, the whole plan changed entirely without Carolyn's brother, Ty. So he had no involvement, no knowledge of this. They just stopped by Carolyn's mom's house and said, Hey, uh, we're not actually going with Ty anymore. We're going on our own way. We're leaving early. We're taking a different route. Interesting. And you don't know why they decided to do that at the last minute? Um, I don't know why. Well, I, I didn't mean, know I can... if in your research it said why they decided to do that. No, I think it'll come become a little bit clearer. I think what we can... We can assume the reason why. Okay. So Carolyn, Harry, and Mark left in Harry's 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix, and that was the last time Carolyn's family ever saw Carolyn and Mark again. Hmm. So I'm just trying to picture, I'm sorry, I, I get sidetracked on this, but I'm trying to picture this 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix, and I always say that if you ever divorced me, I'm going to be doing donuts on your lawn <laughs> in my I rock mm-hmm. playing here I go here I go again on my own <laughs> yes that's what I picture that's happening true. here with Harry but I mean not the same car no but in my head that's what I see okay so, all right <laughs> okay so remember you know at that time Mark was only two years old and Carolyn was 26 years old so that you know young mom super young child leaving with Harry in this awesome Pontiac Grand Prix got it So in the spring of 1982, so you fast forward all the way until the springtime comes, so they get through the winter, Carolyn's family hadn't heard from Carolyn or Mark since they left Michigan, so Carolyn's brother Ty, he called the police and reported them missing, both Carolyn and Mark. Wow, so almost a year later, though. I wonder if that was normal. Yeah, I've sort of thought about this, and I've tried to put myself in Ty's shoes. Number one, if my sister turned up missing... I probably wouldn't even notice. I wouldn't even care. 
I'm kidding. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm, That's I say she's, that because she's, she's listening. She's listening. And... She's gonna, I'm, she's going to be mad. We're going to have a text battle no, tomorrow about how horrible you are. Yes, she is. No, no, she's not. <laughs> she's not going to be mad. She yes. loves me and she knows that I would be devastated if anything happened to her probably two years later when I figured it out. Mm. So I, I tease my sister. And so anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked. I try to put myself in Ty's shoes and he probably just thought maybe this, you know, behavior was normal to not hear for her from her for several months. He was probably hurt that they, you know, left after they had this planned a caravan. So he probably initially didn't think it was important to call the police until months passed. And wait a minute, you know, I'm not hearing from Carolyn. Yeah, and I guess, you know, this is 1981 into 1982, so you don't have social media, you don't have a cell phone, you know, people didn't communicate as much back then as they do now, so yeah, I get it. and most likely, when they left for San Antonio, who knows if Harry had a place secured to live, you know, supposedly he had a job secured that he was supposed to start, but I would think in 1980. One, you're going to be waiting for your loved one to land, you know, get on their feet, get their residence established, connect a phone before they call you and just probably be really disappointed that they didn't call you from a payphone along the way to at least let you know that they made it there. Yeah. You know, all those feelings probably, you know, overwhelmed everybody. Yeah. So after Ty filed the missing person police report, Harry was interviewed by investigators at some point. Harry provided information that just doesn't seem to add up. So Harry claims that Carolyn and Harry got into a verbal argument while en route to Texas. And as a result of their argument, Harry said he dropped Carolyn and Mark off on the side of Interstate 75 near Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio is only about 70 miles south of Hazel Park. So they didn't make it very far at all. No, they didn't. They made it literally right across the border into Ohio. And he just dropped them off on the side of I-75, like, not at, well, like, a business says. or somewhere where they could call and get help. That's strange. It, it is a strange, I mean, statement to police, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you're the last person to be with them and know them to be alive. And that's your son. And that's, that's your son. And you're, you're yeah, exactly. Who's going to drop their, four, you know, two-year-old son and 26-year-old girlfriend off on the side of a highway an interstate, mind you. Yeah, and I seventy five is a busy interstate. Oh, I'm sure it is. I don't know. I've never. I've been up there one time to Michigan, and I'm pretty sure I'll never go back. You've been in Atlanta. I seventy five goes all the way down to Atlanta through Florida. Oh, I love Atlanta. Yeah, I love everything about Atlanta. <laughs> Except and for the traffic. That traffic on I seventy five in Atlanta is no joke. I don't remember. I remember one thing from Atlanta when I was there. I was there for a training and they had this highway bridge that collapsed. I don't remember which bridge it was, like maybe Highway 80 something, 83. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, 89. (laughs) The only reason I remember this is because it was a big deal and they reopened it when I was there and everybody was celebrating and you can get like 80, whatever the highway is, 83 cent beers. Oh, wow. So, yeah, okay. it was pretty awesome. But anyway, and I do remember Atlanta had the Marta bus that was yeah. like their only mode of transportation. Do you know what their slogan is? Can I do no, it? No, go ahead. It's ride Marta, it's smarta. <laughs> That's true. Okay, I like almost everything about Atlanta. <laughs> I don't know if that's that? still the case. That was what it was when I was in the 90s. That was their slogan then. Okay. <laughs> Probably like not it. anymore, but. It could. Yeah, no, I like it. It's catchy. It's catchy. So anyway, the weird thing about Harry's statement, not only did he say that he dropped Carolyn and Mark off on the side of an interstate after an argument, but he said he dropped Carolyn and and Marty, or I'm sorry, but he said he dropped Carolyn and Mark off on the side of the highway with a suitcase and $4,000 in cash that he gave to Carolyn. Hold on. $4,000 in cash. Yeah. In 1981, that's a lot of money. You're just going to leave. Do the math. Get online. All right. But hold on. Google it. I mean, that's a lot of money. And you're going to leave your kid and your girlfriend on the side of an interstate with $4,000 in cash. Like, how vulnerable are they in that position? That's that's insane to me. But let me look this up. Yeah, it is weird. Who knows if that's true or where he got that money, if it is true, and if he cared so much to give them $4,000 that he 
Number one, $4,000 is excessive amount of money just to catch a bus or a ride back. Right. Why did he give them $4,000? That's what I don't understand. What was the reasoning? You got in an argument with someone, so you're like, okay, well, I'm going to drop you off here, and here's $4,000 for what? Okay, it's in today's money, that's $14,217.66. That's a lot of cash. Yeah, I love how you get really excited. Sorry. And you, and then I forget what I'm saying because my brain doesn't work as fast as yours. But I was really on to something good. I apologize. And I think it was if you drop off your loved one with your kid on the side of the interstate, giving them $4,000 is a very excessive amount of money to just get your ride back home to Hazel, Hazel Park, right? Which yeah. is 70 miles. Say? 70 miles roughly away. No, it, none of that makes any sense. Like, that'd be like today, me dropping you off on the side of the interstate and saying, okay, you know, good luck. Here's $14,000. Like, I mean, oh was he God, planning I wish on you never? Would drop me off on the <laughs> I know. $14,000. But, like, was he just, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine that. So he's just like, well, here's $4,000 because what? I'm never going to see my son again. So here's all this money to take care of him until he's 18. Like, I don't get that. Right. No, I mean, Okay, devil's advocate, let's just say that we're Team Harry, which I'm not, by the way, but let's just say that I am. Maybe that $4,000 is real. Maybe he's, all this stuff happened and he gave Carolyn $4,000 to say, hey, I'm going to continue on to, to uh, San Antonio. Here's four grand. It's, you know, more than enough to cover my $30 a week for I don't know how long. I'm yeah. not that good at math, but unlikely but i mean you know there's that possibility i guess okay not only did harry claim to have given carolyn four thousand dollars before leaving her on the side of the highway with their two-year-old son harry also claimed that carolyn told harry to get rid of the rest of her belongings in her car in his car but why would she do that i mean oh well, i guess because he gave her four thousand dollars to go buy new belongings like it doesn't make any sense why are you gonna just be like oh okay we got into a heated argument, so heated that you thought it was appropriate to leave me and our two-year-old son on the side of a busy interstate with $4,000, but on top of that, just go ahead and get rid of everything of mine that's in the car. That just, that seems very odd to me. Yeah, that might, I'm sorry, uh, that might be a normal reaction from a dude. You know, if he doesn't have a lot of stuff, like whatever, I don't care, just get rid of it you know, I'm done and walk away. Like I could see dudes, I could, I could see myself doing that. Whatever's fitting inside of a car, I could walk away from and not care. Hmm. Most women, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you're one. I mean, can you walk away from your belongings that you probably have collected for a long time? No, absolutely not. Because I mean, it, not because only... if you're, if you're taking it from Michigan all the way to San Antonio, Obviously, if it's fitting in a car, that's the stuff that really means the most to you that you want to keep, right? Well, and speaking, you know, from if it were me, not only is it my stuff in there, it's Mark's stuff in there. That's my child's clothing and toys and probably blankets and, you know, things that make him comfortable and feel safe in a new environment. Like, why would I just be like, well, just take all of that and destroy it? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it makes me think of a time... When I worked as a state trooper and I was parked alongside the interstate. Oh, God. Is this another ticket story? Did you have your campaign hat low and did you walk up all bad? No. Get them, prone them out of the car for speeding five over? I'm super nice. I okay. never did that. <laughs> but no, so I'm sitting there just kind of watching traffic and, you know, whatever. And as I'm sitting there, here comes this SUV just speeding by me honking the horn and I look and it's just going all over within the lane just back and forth like somebody is grabbing the steering wheel and like just jerking it and I'm like what in the world is going on so they they go a little bit a little bit past me and then they pull over aggressively on the side of the interstate and I'm like okay so I you know I go I get behind them and before I can even get up to them um, by the time I get out you know in traffic and get down the road to them, the guy is already out of the car. He gets out of the driver's seat, 
opens the back hatch of the SUV and starts just dumping stuff on the side of the interstate, just throwing it out. And I'm like, what is happening here? I get up there and a lady gets out of the passenger side and then she has a baby that's, I mean, maybe one still in a car seat, takes them out, is holding them. So we're all here on the side of a very busy interstate. He's chucking stuff out of the car. She's got the baby here and I'm just standing there like, like what is going on? So I get her and the baby, I get the baby and her, it's cold out too, by the way, you know, in my car where they're warm and I start talking to him, he's like, well, we, we were on our way here. Um, and we got into a heated argument and I just told her she could get out And so that's what's happening. I told her she has to get out. That kid is not my kid. That's her kid. And she can take all her stuff and she can get out. I'm not taking her with me any further. And I'm like, what are you doing? This, I mean, whatever, regardless of whatever's happening between the two of you, you have a one-year-old here. And this is the side of a very busy interstate. It's cold outside. This is not the place for that. Like, what are you thinking? That's, I mean, that's a true story. So, I mean, that's not what happened in this case, though. He, like, calmly, they get into a heated argument to the point where he wants to drop her, and they're, and this is his son, too, this other scenario that I'm talking about. That wasn't his child. This is his own son. So the argument is heated enough that he pulls over on a busy interstate and makes them get out, and then he's calm and collected enough to say, here's $4,000 in one suitcase, and the rest of your stuff I'll just take with me and dispose of it when I get yeah. where I'm going. Doesn't It no. doesn't make any kind of rational sense at all. No, it doesn't. Does not pass the common sense test. You're right. Mm-mm. You know, because Harry was the last person to see Carolyn and Mark alive again, Harry was considered a person of interest by police. However, because there's no evidence tying Harry to like a crime. Um, He was never identified as a suspect by police. So not only did he claim to abandon Carolyn and Mark, uh, Harry never made it to Texas. Interesting, right? Wait a second. He had a new job waiting for him in Texas. Well, according to Harry, he continued on his way to Texas only to turn around and head back to Michigan because he was experiencing car troubles. Hmm. In 1981, in his 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix, he had car troubles. Well, I mean, devil's advocate again. Okay, maybe he got a lemon. But even so, like, if you have a job waiting for you and a new life waiting for you in San Antonio, that was your plan. You're going to take your family and start a new life in San Antonio. And all of a sudden, some minor car trouble is going to prevent you from stopping at a dealership saying, hey, take a look. Like, that, that doesn't make sense either. You're, gonna, you're not only going to not continue your journey to start your new life, you're going to turn back around and go back to Michigan. Let's say that Harry did do something nefarious to Carolyn and Mark. Wouldn't it make more sense for him to travel on to San Antonio to start a new life because he'd be so far removed from that region of the United States? Maybe, maybe, or he never had that plan in place. There was no job waiting for him. He made all of that up to get them to head out on the road with him. And if they're heading out on the road with him to start a new life, her family is not going to become suspicious for a while because she's all the way down in Texas. She's setting up a new house. She has to get her phone connected. She'll get in contact with them eventually. To me, that was a good setup for him because can I ask you something or am I jumping ahead if I say when he drove back to Michigan, did he at any point contact her family and say anything about this argument and leaving them on the side of the interstate? Well, no, not with the information that we have. Of course, the police have more information that they won't release to the public, of course. So, I mean, that that is a possibility. He could have done that. I don't know that to be true. Doubtful. But But what I'm what I think, based on the information that's available, I think Toledo, Ohio is a red herring. I don't think that it has anything to do with anything that happened. If he did something, which my opinion is, I think he probably did do something to Carolyn and Mark. If he did something to them, he didn't do it on the side of of the highway or the interstate in Toledo, Ohio. He probably did it somewhere between Michigan and Texas. And who knows when he returned? Who knows when the police actually have him coming back and verifying that he's back in Michigan. Maybe he made it all the way down to Texas. True. It's it's hard to say. And I'm sure that he didn't go back and tell her family anything that happened because they didn't become worried until the next spring. So had he said, hey, I dropped them off on the, si- the side of the interstate 
And had they known that she was only 70 miles south of them, supposedly, and didn't ever come back, then they probably would have made the police report way sooner yeah, than sooner, of course. next spring. So Yeah, but he, again, we, we don't know for sure. No, we but, don't know for but sure, that's... but I'm just setting this whole thing up. I, I think that that was this whole Texas thing was his plan to set everything up. Her family thinks they're gone out of state. That's why they're not contacting. She's Ty not probably contacting threw them. a wrench in it when he was like, Hey, I'll join you. Right. And, uh, you can just carry on from Oklahoma. I want to go there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. And if they went on a different route, maybe they didn't even head to Texas. Maybe they went the other direction. Who knows? Or, or a different direction. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, you're right. Who knows? What we do know is Carolyn and Mark were never seen by their family again, and Harry's behavior is extremely suspicious. For sure. And as if Harry's story and behavior isn't weird enough, Harry refused to take a polygraph when asked by police. And in addition to that, Harry has since changed his name several times since their disappearance. I'm going to butcher his name. I don't know what um, you know nationality he is. Um, but it, but it's, he's got some really weird names. And so the first name that he had was Anpranikton, Anpranikton, I think it's Anpranikton, Carizian. Okay. And this was after he, after they went, disappeared? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So he was first An, Anpranikton, Carizian. Okay. Then he changed it to Hamperson, Carizian. And then he changed it to Hampik, Hizirian. Hisarian, sorry, Hampik Hisarian, and now he goes by Harry Kazarian. So his name changes are similar in that, you know, I don't know if this is like a um, some kind of variation of his surname from wherever he's from. So he goes from Anpranikton Karizian to Harry Kazarian. Hmm. It's it's a lot to keep up with. So. Why would you change your name four times after your, you know, loved one and your son comes up missing when you're the last person to see them alive? I don't know. I I don't know if it has anything to do with, you know, if the left has to do with the right on this. I don't know. I know. But I mean, if somebody that you love, I mean, maybe their relationship, uh, the two, the two of them weren't going to work out. But he still has his son. And why would you go and change your name all kinds of times so that if if they're looking for you or yeah, they somebody's know where he's looking at. They know for who he you? Is. Yeah. And, he, you know, as far as I could tell, he's completely, you know, refused to cooperate with police. I don't think that, you know, he's ever come forward and done more interviews. I, I think there's a lot of questions that, you know, detectives still have that they're not getting answers to that. I think Harry is the only person that holds the answers to. And so, you know, the unfortunate thing about it is Harry, you know, Carolyn and Mark were so abruptly taken from their family Yeah. and deep down in their, in their heart of hearts, you know, that they feel like Harry has the answers and they'll probably never get it because if he's held it this long, 40 years, 40 years, He's never going to say anything. Yeah. So remember, Carolyn was last seen by her family in Hazel Park, Michigan in August of 1981, leaving with her two-year-old son, Mark, and Mark's dad, Harry Carizian. Harry's 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix was the mode of transportation, and they were en route from Hazel Park, Michigan to San Antonio, Texas. Harry reportedly left Carolyn and Mark on the side of Interstate 75 near Toledo, Ohio. Carolyn was 26 years old at the time of her disappearance, and she would be 67 years old today. She's described as 5 foot, 5 inches, 110 pounds. Carolyn has brown, shoulder-length hair and blue eyes. She's a small gal. Mm -hmm. Carolyn's son and Harry's son, Mark Stephen Martin, was 2 years old at the time of his disappearance and would now be 45 years old today. He has light brown hair and brown eyes. We've posted the age progression photo that they have of Mark. They did an age progression photo. It's on our website at mysteriesandmimosas.net. And uh, as well as pictures of Carolyn and Mark when they were, when he was a baby. If you have any information about Carolyn or Mark Martin, please contact Lieutenant Detective Bob Anderson with the Madison Heights Police Department at 248 837 
2732. Or if you like, you can email him at bobanderson at madison-heights.org. Wow, that's a that's an interesting case. I really hope somebody out there knows something. Just so her family, I mean, I don't know if her parents are still alive or not, but maybe her brother can get answers to where his sister is after all these years. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm going to link one of our um, references on this. One of our source material is a news article. And in that news article, Ty kind of talks about it, and he says, you know, he kind of gives a good insight into what he felt that day. I mean, his whole world came crashing down. It's very unfortunate. Um, you know, I joke about losing my sister, but you know, brothers and sisters have a really strong bond as I'm sure Ty and Carolyn did, especially because they're twins. That's oh, the thing twins. I forgot to mention. They're oh, twins wow. and twins have an even, even tighter bond than your regular brother and sister. For sure. So at some point, if somebody sees something or, or saw something or somebody knows something that they would come forward and even give, you know, Lieutenant Anderson an anonymous tip. So don't forget to check out our website at mysteriesandmimosas.net. There you'll find, like Max said, the age progression photo of Mark and photos of Carolyn as well as our source material for this episode. Yeah, thank you for listening. And again, you can also, when you visit us on our website, you can uh, send us episode requests, mimosa recipes. You know what? Even if you're interested, send us a trivia question because that's never been done. Ever. It's true. Yeah. And if you want to just like, I don't know, give Aria some kudos or something, I feel sometimes like Max bullies me a little bit. So, you know, it's just tough love. And I'm sorry that I'm, I'm rude to you when it comes to trivia, but I take it very serious. I know you think it's a game, but to me, this is like hardcore real life stuff. I don't mess around. As you can tell, I dominated your trivia. I stump you every week at my trivia You just can't beat me. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Wow. No, you know, the thing is, is I'm too nice to you. I gave you easy trivia. Oh, here we go again. Okay. Yeah, so did I. I just gave you the Smurfs. Easiest cartoon ever. No, it's not. There's Uh, several cartoons that were probably released in 1981, and why would I know that? I wasn't even born then. As you keep pointing out. So with that, that's enough of that this episode is done son thank you for listening and until next time we wish you a good weekend cheers cheers